Welcome back to Real Networking Live. We've got a great show for you today. Marlon Agueta is with us here today. We'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone. I'm really excited today to have Marlon in the studio with us. Thank you so much for stopping no, by. Thank you yeah. so much for bringing me here today. I'm very excited uh, to be part of this show and, and, uh, and for the opportunity to speak to you today. Oh, so. it's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show before, it's the premise is that we're going to demonstrate uh, the proper way to have a one-to-one -one, uh, with someone when you're networking. The only difference is today it's going to be a one-sided conversation because we have a, lim a limited amount of time for the show. So I'm going to be the one asking Marlon questions. Um, so it'll be basically like half of a one-on-one. -on -one. But we want to do this because we want to empower business owners that uh, are out there networking and trying to grow their business. We want to empower them with the right kind of tools and mindset when they go to have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody to really develop those deeper relationships. Um, and so there's certain questions, um, a, way that a, a way that a meeting can be kind of facilitated in that setting where both people come away winners and uh, where you can really build those deeper relationships that, that lead to business uh, eventually. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to jump right in with Marlon. I know, Mark, you have a very, very interesting story, not only personally, but professionally and different challenges that you've overcome. And I know our viewers are going to be very interested to hear. So let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. Sure. Yep. So you, you were actually born in El Salvador. Yes, I was. Yeah. So uh, not, not too long ago, I like to say. <laughs> but I was, I was born in El Salvador and I moved to the United States and, 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 and really landed in New York City. And then how we got here is a, it's a uh, very interesting story because it was just pure luck. You've probably heard of the, so I have family that was living in New York City that had escaped the, the Civil War in the 80s. Okay. And they had put in uh, green card applications for us. This is back in the 80s. Now, this, now fast forward to 1998. Uh, I'm 18 years old at the time, and we get a phone call. Hey, the, the applications are approved. And my mom is like, what applications are you talking about? And just by pure luck, we, were, we got lucky, and we were able to, to get approved, because not, not everyone does, believe sure. it or not. And we were really blessed and lucky. And my mom took the chance. She said, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to do this for you guys. And, and it was just from one day we were in El Salvador, living our lives the, uh, the way we were doing at the time, and the next morning I was in New York City. Um, so it was, it was very shocking, but it was, it was a bless. In, in the long term, at the time, I didn't see it that way. Right. So, so what was life like for you growing up in El Salvador? I, you know, because I know most of our viewers have probably never been there, or they might have like a preconception about sure. what it might like be like. So kind of what, I mean, you know, growing up as a kid or into junior high, high school, like what, what was life like for you there? It was very simple. It was, it was very, totally different. So people are different, uh, like every other place you go to, people are very humble. And at the time, I, I, didn't, um, I, I didn't think I was going to be here today. <laughs> so uh, I was growing up during the, the war years, right? So we, uh, the war started sometime in, in, in the early 80s. And so life was really tough during those years, especially because my father <laughs> served in the military. So, mm. uh, but but the, and during those years, it was really tough. And I, I was talking to a friend recently, kind of remembering those early years of my life. And we used to hear <laughs> the the guerrillas and the and the army fight at night times. In fact, sometimes you will look at the uh, at the hills and and the and, and the side country from from where we lived, and you could hear the bullets. And sometimes we have bombs landing fairly close to where we lived, and that's wow. just how war is. I mean, it was it was just tough, and we were pretty pretty humble. We have very humble beginnings, and we're fairly poor. But my mom was just a warrior, and she and, and I give a lot of credit to my mom. She probably go, is going to hate that. <laughs> well, I hate this when she hear this, but but we, we were we we're fairly poor. But she did really did a good job making us feel that we were not, and so. Even though I knew we didn't have a lot, somehow it was it was it, 
you know, she did a really good job preventing us from realizing that we were not really at the top of the food chain back right. then. And, and she made every effort, including my father. Eventually they divorced, but they, um, he, you know, she was able to push us through school back then. We went to a really good school in the country. Back in those days, they would look at your income and sort of determine how much you could pay. And there were people that were paying full tuition uh, because they had the means. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it was just challenging. Uh, it, and I think at the time, I was also very confused. Uh, it's just like any teenager. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was never confused. As if, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, you have uh, siblings, brothers, sisters? I, I, I do. I have an older brother. Uh, my younger brother, he, he passed away oh, uh, sorry probably in 2006, forever, uh, in February of 2006, uh, he passed away. Uh, but yeah, the three of us came here. My bro my older brother, he's uh, he's still in New York City. Okay. Um, I, he well on the outside of New York City, not quite in New York City, but in New York State. Yeah. Uh, and so is my mom. Okay. Yeah. Great. And I also have an adopted uh, brother now. Oh, cool. Christopher. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's another story. But <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, no, we're we're very blessed now uh, to 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 still be here. So what was the? Uh, I'm sure it was culture shock for you to be just dropped in in New York City as an 18 year old. You know, coming from where you came from. What what was that like? I mean, had did, how how did you adjust <laughs> to that? Right? Yeah, it was a cu cultural shock. I mean, it would be a cultural shock for any anyone who's never been to a big city it's definitely a shocking experience to go to New York City for for me it was it, it was really completely different I didn't I had some English on me but I didn't really speak quite well so I would spend a lot of time listening and so um, I think I just I, I, I just follow what people were doing uh, eventually I understood that I was here to learn the culture and to integrate into the culture. And that meant that I had to put my background a bit on the shelf for, for a few years so that I would be able to adapt. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, a lot of folks they, that come to, that, that move to different countries, they're always kind of looking back to where they came. And, and I'm very proud of, of, of my life when I was a kid and, and my, my life in El Salvador. But I realized that I had to leave my country behind in, in the sense that I had to find a way to build a better life in, in, in New York and really in the United States and to be able to contribute to this society because I think it's one of the greatest countries in the world. In fact, I don't think that my story would even be possible in any other country. That's mm -hmm. how much I believe in this country. Yeah, I think a lot of times those of us who are, who are native to the United States a lot of times we just accept it as just, well, you know, that's just the way things are. And we don't understand until we have interactions with other people who were not born here or born into certain circumstances here. And we just kind of take it for granted sometimes, you know, and it's so, I, I, I so think, I appreciate yeah. your, your story and, and you saying that. No, yeah. I, I think, I think that that happens. I mean, I, you know, even now I may, I may take things for granted, but I'm reminded that uh, every country has issues. Uh, the, the U.S. is not the only country with issues. We have issues everywhere. Hmm. Uh, but I think what's important, and, and that's something I learned over time, is that the circumstances are the circumstances. So we should all contribute to make our place or to make this world a better place, in my opinion. And, but, but in the end, the only thing you can change that you have full control of is yourself. If, if the circumstances are going to change, in whichever direction they change, you, you're going to have very little control over what happens. Like the economy is going to change, the governments, you know, they come and go, your family members, they come and go, but the only thing you have control of is who you become. And mm. that's something that I take uh, very seriously and, and I've learned over the, the, the years. Well, obviously, I mean, so, so you, went, um, you went to City College I did. Right, in New York, and uh, did you... I, I know that you worked in the in the engineering field. Did, is that what you studied at City College, or was I, that or is that later? Yeah, I, I did. I, I I studied electrical engineering for my undergraduate. Then eventually, I joined a company uh, that was also a blessing, and I was able to develop myself during those years. And then I went into uh, MBA school. I, I I figured that if I had some business background. 
I would be able to develop a business. I say, oh, I'll go to, I, I'll, I'll go to MBA school. I should learn business. And that wasn't quite <laughs> the experience. Once you start doing business in real life, it's, it's very different from what you learn in school. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you worked in that field for a while, but now you are a leadership and motivational speaker. So what was the catalyst you know, in, in, in that situation that, that made you want to actually get up in front of people and teach people, you know, sure. about leadership and, and to motivate them. Yeah, so I like to look at the camera first because I think there are a lot of introverts out there that I think would benefit from what I'm going to say here on, on this question. Uh, because I am an introvert myself and I think there's a lot of people that, that would experience fear when they speak. So there are two parts to, the, to answer that question. <laughs> The first is to become a good presenter, and I learned that through my work. And the what I what I what I recognized when I was doing presentations is that I really loved to have an audience in front of me. I was not very good. In fact, I would sweat. I mean, I was I sweat pouring. <laughs> I had my knees were shaking. I mean, it was terror. I was I was really terrified. But I liked the idea of being the the center of attention during a presentation. And so I made it a, a, a point to, to learn how to present well. Uh, how that became a leadership motivational, how I became a leadership motivational speaker is by realizing that I think my story is very, very unique. Uh, and I think everybody's stories are unique, but I, you know, this idea of coming to the United States and uh, going through the corporate ladder, kind of starting your own business, a struggling, uh, my brother's story is also very unique, having to suffer through that episode of my life and overcoming those challenges. It's something that I think represents the American dream. And nowadays, especially, we hear that, uh, sometimes we hear that the American dream is, is dead, and I don't believe so. I think it's still very much alive. And, the, and to me, the American dream represents the opportunity to do the things that you want to do. And I don't think I would have had the same opportunities anywhere else in the world. Leadership also came into play because when I was leading teams, I, I recognized that there are certain ways that I was, some of my leaders were not uh, very well trained, let's just say, uh, and I realized that there's an opportunity to, to, to really share some basic leadership skills uh, that and, and, and advanced skills as well. I think, I think the world uh, things rise and fall under leadership and so I think if you look at some of the issues that we have nowadays a lot of it comes down to bad leadership and I made it a point to study leadership on my own for probably seven for the last seven or eight years and I learned so much and read so many books that I that I started to realize hey I want to share this knowledge with other people and what else, uh, what would be the venue to do so, becoming a speaker and sharing the, that knowledge that mm -hmm. I've learned over the years. Because um, I don't think everybody has time to read, you know, 100, 200 <laughs> books. <laughs> right. I know I've got a few, I've got a few that are, uh, that are, that are waiting for me. And I just, you know, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to take all that in, you know, that, that you want to. There's, there's not a lot of time for it. So um, I, I enjoy listening to people speak and, and present information as well so i'm more of a listener and a watcher than i are you know than i am you know a reader yeah. of a book right so and i think there's a lot probably a lot of other people that they kind of learn and absorb information you know better that way yeah so, and i and i think leadership is important because we're all leaders whether we want to admit it or not if you have kids you're a leader mm -hmm. if you coach a team you're a leader i mean you're 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 in your leader to yourself right you have to lead your life and mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot of value in sharing uh, leadership skills, but also in, in, in making those presentations motivational and inspira inspirational, which is where I connect my story to everything that I speak, because it's great to have a story. I think ultimately you have to land the plane and make a point, right? So yeah. I tend to make my presentations extremely engaging by sharing story, takeaway, story, takeaway, yeah. so, so that... Uh, People love a story, and, and I think that's, that's important. So um, I want to know, uh, so you, your, your wife's name's Tina. Yes. <laughs> you guys look very happy. You're a great couple. 
So, had, so how did how did that happen? And how, uh, did you, how did you score that? I'm still wondering the same thing. If <laughs> Finn is watching, please. <laughs> so, so, so we met. Uh, so, so for those who are watching, our, uh, Tina, she is she was born and raised in Beijing, so she is Chinese. Mm. Uh, so it was quite a cultural difference between the two. But we met. Uh, we met online. Uh, we were using, an, I guess, a nap called uh, OkCupid, but it doesn't matter. Now they have all kinds of things out yeah. there. Uh, and I remember the first date. I wasn't sure because her picture was a bit, a bit, a bit weird, kind of. Uh, I, I couldn't make out uh, if there was something off about the picture. So <laughs> I was very suspicious. And I said, well, let's just meet up. And so we met actually around Central Park in New York City. And so I said, well, we're just going to have coffee. So if it's not it doesn't go well that's that's where it ends so we we, we actually met she was really late and and it's it's, <laughs> it's funny because i never i never really i'm a very punctual person and i, I think i would have left <laughs> but i really wanted to meet her and so i waited and waited and waited and mo it must have been an hour and i'm standing there in columbus circle waiting so we went to get coffee and then uh, i really really loved her from the beginning and i said hey you want to go get dinner after we had coffee and then we went out to this place uh, down in the West Village. It's no longer open, uh, and we, we we walked in into the into the, the place. It was a tapas place, a Spanish uh, restaurant. Really nice. They had uh, live uh, flamenco and the whole works. So this is great. Uh, we're having a great time. We go home now. I'm I'm going to oh, I offered to drive her home, and I remember that I started playing "Wonderful Tonight" by Eric Clapton, and so one of the lines says. Uh, and everyone, uh, but he basically talks about this lady, everybody's looking at her. And I remember repeating the line, and Tina said, but, but no one was looking. And I said, well, it, it didn't matter. I, 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 in my head, everybody was looking at you, because I was. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know how I pulled that line off. <laughs> because <laughs> he says, everyone turns to see this beautiful lady hmm. who's, walking, uh, who's walking around with me. And so I told her, everybody was looking at you. And she said, what are you talking about? No one is looking at me. <laughs> and I said, no, everybody, everyone was, including myself. But uh, yeah, and, and from that day on, I, I just knew I was going to end up marrying So her. how long have you guys been married? Four years. OK, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I knew from the beginning. I, yeah. I, I mean, if you meet my wife, she's, she's, <laughs> she's a really kind person. Uh, and. I, it, she just blew me away from day one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that's all I can say. I can't, uh, I can't uh, explain it to <laughs> too many words. Right. It just blew me away. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we like to do uh, on this show is, um, obviously, it's a LinkedIn yeah. uh, live show, yeah. and we're talking about networking. So um, we'll be displaying uh, you know, your, your, uh, where people can contact you directly on LinkedIn. So one of the things we like to do before we wrap up is, is ask and give an opportunity um, for you to describe who the best types of people are for you to meet, not only uh, directly to do business with directly, but more importantly, like those key like strategic partners or key people, uh, key roles that are really good introductions for you. So as our audience is watching the show, um, they can connect with you and potentially make some introductions for you. Uh, yeah, so I think I think the the best people, the the people that I like to that I like to talk to are those people who are in charge of bringing uh, speakers to conferences, events, organizations, organizations and associations. Uh, specifically, I like to talk to those folks who are in the energy industry, uh, given that my background is the energy industry. However, I, I do, I have spoken at uh, various other types of conferences. And so sometimes the title varies. Sometimes they, they, they're, they're, they, their title is director of marketing. Sometimes it's an HR director. But ultimately, it's the person who's responsible for bringing in uh, speakers to those, uh, to those events and conferences. OK. So if you're out there watching today and you're one of those people or you know one of those people, um, those would be perfect uh, ways that you can connect with Marlon uh, and, uh, and make those introductions for him. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Um, and uh, is there anything else uh, that you would like our, like our viewers to know before, before we sign off? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, uh, you guys got to check out Think Lab Media. This is a great studio. Um, I also want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. As I said, I'm normally a, 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 a very introverted person, even though you, you're saying that I'm very outgoing. <laughs> I am outgoing. Uh, but this is a great opportunity, and I really do appreciate what you're doing because I think that when you guys... Uh, brought me in and, and it, it wasn't Mark that bro introduced me to networking. Uh, I, I really had no idea what networking was. And, and I think that was a thing that I should have learned when I was in college and I refused to you know, network. Uh, I thought it was sort of not, not, not a thing that I should be doing despite everybody telling, uh, telling us, hey, you should network with people. And I didn't understand what that meant. And I love the fact that you said it, it's about building relationships because it's not about um, it's not a transaction. It's about building relationships so that you can get a, maybe a referral or maybe just a friendship. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's extremely valuable in, in the world that we live in where everything is online and, and a lot of the face-to-face -face interaction uh, is going away. I think uh, it's, it's very special and very, uh, very unique what you, got, what you guys are doing and sharing for those folks who are new to networking. This is a great opportunity to kind of see how things go. And well, so I appreciate a, that. And so thank you for having very, me here. Very kind words. <laughs> I appreciate that, too. So, so again, connect with Marlon. Uh, the, him and Tina are great. Um, and we've had, I've had a, a really great time kind of getting to know you. And, and I'm looking forward to, to getting to know you guys even better and, and spending more time with you. So I really appreciate you being here today. And for everyone else, you never really know who you're going to see until we go live. So make sure that you follow uh, my page on LinkedIn so that you get a notification when we're going to go live with these shows. And uh, you never know. So tune in next time and see who our next guest is on Real Networking Live. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.